so good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sonia Ghosh, and I'm a first year PhD student at the Kapta and Astronomical Institute affiliated with the University of Rottingham. I primarily work with Professor Leon Koopmans in collaboration with Dr. Christian Brinkering, who is here with us today, Dr. Mark Lane Wolt, and Dr. Albert Jan Boonstra. So, building upon the uh, introduction that uh, Christian gave us about the ALO concept, now I will be going to talk about my study with ALO in particular the effects of uh, antenna position offset on the 21 centimeter power spectrum. And please remember that this is an ongoing uh, work and the final goal is to establish a framework where we can uh, study the various systematics that might affect the performance of ALO. Now, before I uh, begin, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizers for conducting this beautiful conference and giving me this opportunity to present my research. So we already, So we already heard that ALO, which stands for Astrophysical Lunar um, Observatory, uh, is a science payload for the uh, EL3 mission. And uh, it is uh, envisioned that it will be a low frequency radio interferometric array operating on the lunar far uh, side. So the, uh, the science driver behind such an infrastructure is basically the 21 centimeter line from the hydrogen that is uh, coming from the most pristine uh, period of the universe evolution called the Dark Ages and the subsequent period uh, called the cosmic dawn. Now, since it is expected that the signal of interest is going to peak at around 30 megahertz and at 70 megahertz uh, for the periods of dark ages and cosmic dawn respectively, so ALO is planned to operate on a large bandwidth approximately spanning from 7 to 70 megahertz. And uh, here I show you an artist's depiction of the full scale ALO on the uh, lunar surface. Now, uh, moving into my uh, uh, project, so since ALO is uh, expected to uh, work as an FFT uh, telescope, it is uh, essential for the antennas to be placed on a regular grid. And any um, uncertain, any um, non-redundancy that might be introduced uh, by the antenna position offset or by beam-to-beam -beam variation will lead to uncertainty in the power spectrum measurements and uh, it will contaminate the your window. And that is where my work comes into uh, picture. So we know in realistic scenario that the deployment of the dipoles on the lunar surface might be flawed and, it, and that might introduce errors in the antenna positions and uh, uh, orientation uh, with respect to the planned position. And these errors then might get uh, propagated to the data processing uh, chain and hence it will send, uh, impact the uh, extraction of the 21 centimeter uh, signal. For my current analysis, I'm focusing uh, only on the antenna position offset and trying to understand how it impacts uh, the 2D power uh, spectrum. And uh, here uh, we need to remember that the final goal is to be able to define the uh, acceptable tolerance level uh, for our given sensitivity goals and how they propagate into the uh, image. Now for this intuitively, it is uh, helpful for us to have a simulation where we can uh, put the non idealities that we know will be there along with the array layout, and then try to analyze the uh, how it affects the uh, recovery of the signal. And so for this, it is very essential to have an end-to-end -end forward simulation pipeline, and that is what I'm trying to do here. So what I show here is the uh, schematic diagram of the first order framework uh, of the forward simulation pipeline that I'm trying to develop. And in its current iteration, it, uh, it uh, takes into account the input array layout, which might be regular or an irregular array. By irregular, I mean I'm introducing the antenna position offset, uh, uh, drawing the random error from a zero mean Gaussian distribution with a um, parameterized standard deviation. Now, the idea is to vary the value of the standard deviation so that we can investigate on the various varying levels of the perturbed antenna position. Now, once we have the array layout, we uh, generate interfer uh, mock interferometric observation using this software called OSCAR. And upon having the uh, mock data, we uh, introduce a sky model. Now, for the sky model, we start off with a diffused galactic radiation. And in the radio interferometric jargon, we call this the galactic foreground. And uh, so once we have the sky map, we can extrapolate it to our, uh, uh, to our uh, frequency. Uh, with the help of uh, the global sky model. And, uh, and then uh, what we try to do is to uh, understand how uh, this might uh, 
uh, impact the uh, because uh, we need to remember that the signal that we are trying to detect uh, is hidden beneath this foreground and the large part of the actual signal that we receive is uh, contributed by this uh, foreground so it is very essential to effectively model the foreground and try to understand its impact on the power spectrum estimation right so uh, once you have the sky model and the area layout we uh, try to uh, simulate the visibilities and uh, try to see what kind of images we may uh, we might get for alo uh, here you see the uh, point spread function or the synthesized beam now uh, you can uh, uh, imagine this to be what the interferometer sees when a point source is directly overhead the uh, array so you can assume it to be the eye of the interferometer now for the lower frequency you see that we have a central main lobe with some side lobes but as we uh, increase the frequency and go to the higher frequency we see increasing number of uh, grating lobes right and uh, while that uh, now the great the grating lobe itself is a consequence of the regular array that we are planning to have and uh, so and as we increase the frequency the electric field is highly undersampled that leads to the increase in the uh, great, number of the grating lobes and the consequence is that when we get the final image uh, of the sky from uh, uh, a low like uh, array we see something like this so at lower frequency you clearly see that we have a proper sky image that we expect to get but as we go to the higher uh, uh, frequency we get the same image of the sky in a repetitive uh, form shifted around so you can clearly see the impact of the psf and so we have to be very mindful while uh, designing the uh, size of the antenna Uh, while uh, uh, building up alo and also be uh, and also try to develop a clever technique to uh, rid get rid of this uh, imaging artifacts uh, then finally we try to uh, we generate a cylindrically averaged power spectrum uh, with a, a, a pipeline called ps5 and here you see the final here you see the 2d power spectrum for a regular ar uh, array layout that uh, alo will uh, see and if you remember christian has already sh showed in his talk that you may find uh, find the resemblance of a uh, foreground uh, wedge here and the blue region here is the region where we actually want to have high sensitivity in order to detect the uh, 21 cm signal so the take away message from this slide is that uh, uh, this results uh, validate the expected uh, result that we want to have and also provide us like a sanity check if the a uh, simulation pipeline is actually giving us the correct result or not and this is my last last slide so to conclude with uh, my talk is focused on the uh, the antenna position offset does have a potential uh, impact on the power spectrum estimation and as a first order investigation we are trying to understand the uh, the positional offsets uh, impact on the power uh, point spread function the 2d power spectrum and the final goal is to uh, develop a framework where we can uh, uh, give an acceptable tolerance level for the uh, dipole placement uh, errors and for the future work uh, i want to uh, include uh, the beam model the 21 cm model itself in order to make the uh, simulation more uh, realistic and hence uh, give the uh, acceptable tolerance level and with this i'll conclude my slides